Hi, I'm Dr. Snehal Gadecha, neonatal and pediatric physiotherapist and certified early intervention specialist. The purpose of this case presentation is to emphasize the importance of early diagnosis and intervention in a high-risk dystonic child. Infant Y is a 3-year-old male, was born at 26 weeks. He was extremely preterm with an extremely low birth weight of 960 grams. He cried immediately after birth. He was admitted in the NICU for 90 days for twin-to-twin -twin transfusion syndrome, respiratory distress syndrome, neonatal seizures and neonatal meningitis. Infant's brain USG at term showed bilateral grade 2 IVH resolving with multiple ecogenic foci in both cerebral hemispheres. We assessed the child in the NICU and used standardized motor assessments such as general movements assessment. His GMs showed early onset and long duration of cram synchronized followed by absent fidgety movements which indicated high risk for bilateral spastic quadriplegia. GMs also helped us predict that child will have delayed speech cognitive and language milestones. In his neurological assessment, Hein, it showed hypertonia in all four limbs, right more than the left, hypotonic trunk and poor visual tracking. And his Hein scores indicated high risk for cerebral palsy. And his developmental assessment on Bailey's also showed at risk for gross motor development. The neurologist predicted an extremely poor prognosis for this child. The early intervention was started from the NICU. We used evidence-based treatment approaches such as early intervention using principles of Bobath and neurodevelopmental therapy. In NICU, intervention was done to promote flexitone, symmetry in head alignment and midlines. After the child graduated from the NICU, early intervention was started to achieve age-appropriate milestones. Along with this, we also encouraged family participation to facilitate success within the child's environment and focused on family coaching and parent training. By 16 months corrected age, with early intervention therapy, we achieved head control, bilateral rolling, initiation of supine to sit, supported sitting with near to optimal trunk control along with this complementary therapy techniques such as prorats, ankle foot orthosis and kinesio taping was used for optimal alignment. We also achieved age appropriate social milestones. With therapy, we saw the presentation of cerebral palsy change from spastic quadriplegia to right spastic hemiplegia. At 16 months corrected age, the child got infantile spasms that affected his progress and he deteriorated. His EEG showed hips erythremia affecting the occipital, temporal, parietal and frontal lobe. The child was treated for infantile spasms but this caused the child's CP presentation to change from spastic hemiplegia to dystonic CP. With the help of intensive intervention, and the dedication of the family to follow home interventions, the child is now able to maintain head control in all positions, roll, sit independently with optimal trunk control, initiate supine to sit and stand with support with AFOs. He can perform all functional fine motor activities with left upper extremity and can reach and grasp with right upper extremity. It was through early intervention that we could maximize the child's functional independence and reduce the risk of developmental delay.